Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. When you're doing restorative procedures in pedodontics, the rubber dam is used whenever possible. The rubber dam will not only improve your access to the operative field and make restorative procedures easier, but it will also help the patient. The rubber dam will effectively seem to make the operative procedure happen outside of the mouth. The noise and suction of the high-velocity evacuation equipment and the water and air spray of the high-speed handpiece is effectively contained on the rubber dam and is not put into the patient's mouth. So there are fewer sensory events occurring in the patient's mouth, and the patient is more likely to cooperate with you as you do the restorations. This program is designed to show you two methods for placing the rubber dam on teeth in children's mouths. These methods are different from the method you have already learned. We will consider five parts in the rubber dam procedure. The anesthetic placed prior to the rubber dam placement, the rubber dam, the rubber dam clamp, the frame, and the ligatures. For most patients, the anesthetic you inject to anesthetize the teeth will also anesthetize the soft tissue around the tooth on which you will place the clamp. However, if you feel that the clamp will impinge excessively on the palatal gingiva by a maxillary molar, you should consider injecting a small amount of anesthetic in the attached gingiva on the palatal. This is a painful injection, so you should consider the indication carefully before injecting here. When you restore anterior primary teeth, you will infiltrate anesthetic by the incisors to be restored and place the rubber dam on an unanesthetized primary molar. Here you may want to consider anesthetizing the gingiva by the clamped tooth with an injection of local anesthetic or at least with topical anesthetic. The next part of the procedure is the rubber dam. On the left is a rubber dam punched to isolate a number of permanent teeth for a restorative procedure. On the right is a rubber dam punched to restore adjacent teeth in the primary dentition. The differences are fewer teeth are isolated generally one tooth anterior and one tooth posterior to the teeth that will be restored. Occasionally, the most posterior tooth is the one that will be restored. Another difference is that the holes are punched closer together because the teeth are smaller and closer together. The third difference is that the holes punched for primary teeth are punched to simulate the ovoid form of the primary dental arch rather than in a tapered form to simulate the permanent dental arch. In pedodontics, we use the young rubber dam frame. The major difference between the young frame and the frame you're using for adults is that the young frame does not have an extension to fold the rubber dam over. Briefly, the two methods you will be shown differ in the placement of the clamp. One method shows the rubber dam frame and clamp being placed as one unit. The second method shows the clamp being placed first and the rubber dam and frame being placed over it. The two rubber dam clamps commonly used in pedodontics are the ivory number 14 and number 14A clamps. The number 14 clamp is used on all primary second molars and on all small permanent molars. The number 14A clamp is used on permanent first molars. A long length of dental floss is tied on the clamp before it's put into the mouth. In the event that the clamp is dislodged from the tooth or comes off the clamp forcep, the dental floss makes the retrieval of the clamp very simple. To put the rubber dam on as one unit, the punched rubber dam is put on the frame by attaching it to the four corners. The rubber dam should be tight enough to be securely on the frame, but loose enough that there is a lot of flexibility to the rubber dam. Now, put the clamp on the rubber dam by stretching the rubber dam over the wings of the clamp. Use your index finger to make sure that the cheek, buccal mucosa, and lip are not caught in the clamp. Using the clamp forcep, put the clamp firmly on the most posterior tooth, seated securely, 
and carefully release the retaining ring on the forcep. Carefully release the forcep and remove it slowly. If the clamp begins to unseat or to rotate on the tooth, you can easily stop the dislodgement or rotation with a forcep. The clamp should be stable without any rocking on the clamped tooth. After you check the stability of the clamp, use an instrument or your finger and remove the rubber dam from the wings of the clamp. At this point, check to make sure that the rubber dam is well adapted around the clamped tooth. The second method for placing the rubber dam differs in these first steps only. Before showing the steps which are identical for both procedures, we'll show the second method for placement and then show the final steps. In the second method, the rubber dam clamp is placed first and the rubber dam and frame is placed as a unit over the clamp. Seat the clamp on the tooth, in this case a number 14 clamp on tooth K. Make sure that the dental floss tied on the clamp is outside the mouth. Check as before to see that the clamp is stable on the tooth. Now attach the rubber dam on the frame loosely on the four corners. In a single motion, stretch the rubber dam anteriorly so that it snaps over the clamp. At this stage, the rubber dam should be tightly adapted around the clamp tooth. The remainder of the rubber dam procedure is the same regardless of the way the clamp was placed. The rubber dam must be adapted on the other teeth and dental floss ligature is tied. It helps if you pull the rubber dam anteriorly to cover the most anterior tooth to be isolated. At the same time, attach the rubber dam to the middle pin of the frame. Use waxed dental floss to force the rubber dam through the contacts between the teeth. At this point, check the following things. The clamp is stable and has not lifted up on the distal of the molar when you were stretching the rubber dam forward. The rubber dam is tightly adapted on the clamped tooth. The interceptal portions of the rubber dam are completely through the contacts between the teeth. The last step in the rubber dam procedure is to tie dental floss ligatures around all of the teeth that are isolated except the clamp tooth. The dental floss should be long enough to have sufficient length to work with comfortably. Seat the floss through the contacts and then tie the floss using a surgical suture tie. Tie the first loop through twice and then loop back in the opposite direction. It is your choice whether to cut off the extra length of dental floss or to leave the ligatures uncut. Leaving the ligatures long may offer one advantage in that the excess length will allow you to retract the rubber dam cervically if the need should arise. In the treatment of children, the rubber dam is a positive adjunct to performing routine restorative procedures. The technique that you use should satisfy all of the requirements for rubber dam isolation and also should be easy and efficient to perform. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.